lot of deer on this piece of property. We know they're using this area. This week on Kentucky Field, fall is here and deer activity is picking up. There comes one here. Oh, here's a good buck. We'll show you one of the most exciting hunts we've had all season. Next, one of the rarest creatures you'll ever see. I have seen one two-headed copperhead in my life. And we've got the experts to tell you all about it. Then, how about some fast-paced fishing? Yay, I got the same fish! <laughs> it's all next on Kentucky Field. Let's go catching. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. Mercy <laughs> <laughs> Leo! Yeah, we're here. It's a keeper. Here it goes. Oh, Boom! Oh, oh, oh. Wow, that happened. Hello and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Modern firearm season for deer opens today statewide and it's open 16 days for all counties. And it's a great time to be in the woods. Well, this is my favorite time of year, late October. The rut is just starting. I'll tell you, we're in a really cool spot. There's a lot of deer on this piece of property. We know they're using this area, and this farmer wants multiple deer taken out. So, you know, if we get a chance to take two, we'll do that as well. But typically, they've been coming out right here, working their way at, along the edge of this field, on around. Our wind is coming just like this. So we should have tons of shot opportunities if a deer comes out the way they have been. Perfect set. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Deer, deer going right there. Deer took off right there. Deer up on that hill took off this way. You can always expect the unexpected. And as soon as we got up here and got settled down, had an ATV and a rider come literally right, right underneath us. You never know exactly how that's going to affect you, but the uh, only thing you can do is sit in here and see, wait them out. It may not impact them at all. We did see a deer take off. It could, it could be a situation where it's, it's uh, ordered it up for the evening, but uh, let's hope not. Thank you. 
was a really good shot. So I went ahead and knocked another arrow. Something may pop back out as I give this deer a little bit of time to expire. And I'll tighten, maybe, maybe get another shot. We've already got a little buck out here. It's been about 10 minutes and he's already back out here again. It wouldn't surprise me if a few more of those does come out. Now they're gonna be a little bit skittish, but there's a good chance we could get another one. There comes one here. Oh, here's a good buck. Oh my God, look at this. Here's a 10 pointer right here. We got a 10 pointer right beside us. a really really good sign when you're tracking deer these bubbles that you see it on there that that indicates a lung shot typically these type of deer they're going to run 50 60 yards and they're going to pile up well this is deer number one we saw deer number two go down so we know it's right over here you know this was such a crazy hunt because i really came out here to try to fill the freezer with some does and we got this little buck that came out and chased these does around and really helped us out. And that doesn't always work out that way. But then lo and behold, we shoot the first one, we decide to wait a little bit, and right beside me <laughs> stands such a nice buck. It stood right there making a scrape, but that's not why we came out here. It's not real easy to turn your back on, you know, 145, 150 inch buck. But that's what we came out here to do is to take some does, and that buck is still here. I hope the landowner, the farmer, is able to uh, pick that up this uh, gun season. And I want to thank him for letting me come out here after what I was after. And that was a freezer full of venison. Mother Nature is always full of surprises. And to see a really unique animal, check this out.
So here at Salado Wildlife Education Center with John McGregor, which that normally means we're going to look at a snake, right? Uh, normally, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I mean what else is there? <laughs> <laughs> so you're the state herpetologist, but you, you're fascinated with snakes, and you study snakes quite a bit. Right? I, I do. I started when I was about six and never stopped. Speaking of fascinating, we have something today that's pretty fascinating. Uh, how, we have a two-headed copperhead. Now, how many times in your career have you seen this? I have seen one two-headed copperhead in my life. That's this one right here. Wow. And, and so what, what causes a snake? I mean, we you know that it even happens in humans from time to time, but what causes a snake to have two heads? It, it's probably, it was probably going to be twins, mm -hmm. and, and it just never separated. You and the Slater Wildlife Education Center acquired this snake as a, as a couple in, was it Leslie County? Yeah, Leslie County. They physically see the snake in the yard, and they knew, hey, this, this, this is something odd. I've never seen this before. They give you a call, and you knew that the chances of it living in the wild probably weren't yeah. that great. Yeah, actually, they called the conservation officer, okay. and then he <clears throat> went to look at it. And then he sent sent us a photo of it and mm -hmm. asked if we were interested in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure, yeah. So I, I drove down to Hyden and picked up a, a, a two-headed copperhead. So it's been on display here at Slater Wildlife Education Center for about a week. We've had it for around two weeks or so, right? Right. And once once you had a snake like this in your possession. What did you think its chances were of survival? Uh, pretty low, maybe 5%. Yeah. Uh, but when, if it's, once it starts eating, then it's kind of over the hump, and, mm -hmm. and it probably has a chance of living close to a normal lifespan. This snake was brought in because it was so unique, and if this snake grows to maturity, is it going to be released back into the wild? And the answer to that would be? The, the, the answer is no. Uh, it, it would still, no matter if it gets to be two feet long and healthy, mm -hmm. it would still not survive in the wild. So it's actually very fortunate for the snake that it was found and, and called and, uh, and, and it gets to be here on exhibit. Yeah, yeah we think so. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your, all your knowledge okay. in, uh, in, in showing us this snake. So I'm here with Heather Tichy, director of the Salado, Salado Wildlife Education Center. So anytime we have newborns around the Slato Center, it's an exciting time, but this is totally different, huh? Uh, yeah, it's completely different. I mean, he, he came to us, you know, already born. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's different for us, the fact that he has two heads. And uh, it complicates things a little bit because he is a venomous snake, but we're, we're taking the best care of him that we can. In captivity, what do, you, what do you feed this snake? He's eaten four times since he's been with us. And he's eaten pinky mouse twice, which is little chunks of baby mouse. Um, mm -hmm. And then he's eaten frog legs twice. Okay. And that's more of their natural diet would be frog in the wild. I'm sure that when this snake first got here, it created a lot of excitement within the staff. We initially didn't tell the world that we had this snake because the chance of survival wasn't known at that point in time. Yeah, he had a pretty low chance of survival since we didn't know for sure if he had eaten. And he had shed once, which made John think that he had eaten already. Mm -hmm. But we just, we didn't know what to expect. And we initially thought, we'll wait, get him stable, get a baseline of behavior for him, and mm -hmm. then we'll introduce him to the public. So then you, you, you're putting uh, bits and pieces of uh, either frogs or mice in there. Mm -hmm. and. I guess you came back and you saw, saw the food was gone. Do you know which head it's eating out of? Actually, yes. We just got footage of him eating over the weekend. So for someone that wants to come and see this snake, um, it, it has been on display a little bit. You had an opening day to where, you, I mean, TV crews, everyone wanted to come see this snake, didn't they? Oh, yeah. We had, we had media coming out here. They were really interested in him. Um, we actually had the first guests walk through. They didn't even know what they were walking into. And they got <laughs> interviewed. They were both really excited that they got to be the first people to see him. It was a really big day at Slato. It generated a lot of excitement. And now that he's been uh, advertised, we have a lot of people, we're drawing a lot of people through the door that might nor not normally come here this time of year. So, so Slato is actually located at the headquarters of the Department of Fish and Wildlife. And uh, so for someone who wants to come to Frankfurt and see this snake, when can they, when can they come and check him out? We like to have him on display between 10 and 4 every day. Now, okay. we do recommend that you call beforehand because it's based on his stability, it's based on our staff. 10 to 4, and what days are you open? It's Tuesday through Saturday. Tuesday okay. through Friday we open at 9 and close at 5, and on Saturdays we open at 10 and close at 5. Okay. Well, it is a really, really unique opportunity to come check out a two-headed copperhead here at the Slato Center. Thanks for uh, showcasing the snake to us, sure. and uh, hopefully the interest level stays high and he stays healthy. Hopefully. That, that's our hope. For great family fun fishing, good for all ages, try targeting yellow bass.
out here again on Kentucky Lake with Brad Weekly of Brad Weekly Guide Service. And Brad, we're doing something similar to what we did last time. Targeting fish out deep. We're targeting fish out in the middle, out here on these ledges. But typically people come out here and they, they, they're in search of largemouth bass. Today we're going after a species that we hope to catch big numbers and a fish that's really a little easier to catch. Yeah, we're talking about yellows and whites. It's just a matter of finding the school. That's what we're using the graph for now. Riding around a little bit, see which school looks the most promising. We're out here next to the river channel. We're in 15 to 20 foot, checking that ledge. If you find these fish, they're usually right on the bottom and they're easy to catch. Typically, yes. That's, that's pretty much how it works. It's just a matter of targeting the school. Once you find the school, then you're pretty good shape. Anybody's one ounce white or yellow green spoon will work. It's pretty fast action and it's a great great way to start a new fisherman or just for somebody that's wanting the table fare because yeah, these oh, things yeah. eat great. Yeah, you saw the school there, There's didn't the school you? school right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I brought my daughter today. She absolutely loves to fish and uh, this is an opportunity for her to, to drop a spoon down there. It's pretty easy. Pick it up off the bottom a little bit, flutter it around. And when they hit, for their size, they fight really good. Well, Campbell and I are going to catch some fish. Let's go catch in the Campbell. Okay, now let it down to the bottom, Campbell. Are you on the bottom? Okay, now here's what you do. Raise it up and when you let it down on a tight line, you'll feel it touch the bottom. And let it down slow and you'll feel it touch bottom. And you want it to touch the bottom every time, but you want to keep your line tight going up and down because sometimes they'll hit it when it's going down. And if you got slack in your line, you can't feel the fish bite. Oh Lord! <laughs> well, you got the you got the right <laughs> you got the right idea. This is the yellow bass. That's what we're going after. Just not exactly <laughs> the same size. Uh, get her back out there. We got them. We got them around here. <laughs> hey, I think yours is a little bigger. You gonna take him off here? Be careful, you got a trouble hook. Yeah. He's, whoop, uh -oh. he's off. Got you a yellow bass. Now you see why they call them yellow bass, Campbell? Look at the sides of them. See how the sides are kind of yellowish color? Yeah. If I can get this one to the top, this makes about three I've had on this come off. Oh, look at all of them that followed it up. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, now here is a real example of a yellow. Look at this one, he is yellow, yellow. Man, that dude has really got the color. We're in a good bunch of fish right here, Chad. We on them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The He's bottom's, got one right now. The bottom's covered with them. Okay. There's... All right. Down to the bottom. Oh. Uh oh. Come uh -oh. here, Campbell. Come here, Campbell. Oh. <laughs> I got this one. All right. This is a big fish. This is not a white bass. I don't know what it is or a yellow bass. Hang on to your rod. Look at that dude. Take the line. Yeah. <laughs> His first name is Big. <laughs> if it jumps, we're going to get it certified. It could be a bass. <laughs> we haven't seen it yet. No. Here it comes. Oh, it's what a, a drum. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Holy cow! I did that! <laughs> 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 Is that your biggest fish ever? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think that fish weighs? Oh, he's Ten big. Pounds? Yeah, he's he's uh, he's heavy. <laughs> I got it. Okay. You want to touch him? We're gonna turn him loose. That was a good fish, though. Now let's get him. There we go. Get out of here, big dog. High five on that. <laughs> was that fun? Yeah. Look at here. Whoa. That's getting to be, that's a good one there. That is, a, look how thick that fish is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was showing that thing to the camera and he went right in. Oh my goodness. Jeez. Well, okay. the biggest one I've caught, I threw back in. That's because you're such a conservationist, right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> that one was so thick, it must have had eggs, I had to let it go back. Right, okay. <laughs> The good news is on these fish, there, there is no size limit. No, there's no size limit. There is a 30 possession per person limit. 
30, 30 per person. Right, but no minimum size. And there's so many of them. Oh yeah, just whatever your conscience will let you deal with. And that's side. really how many do you want to deal with with flaying, so. Uh-oh. Look at this. You got one. Oh, over the boat. You got over that the one there, Hook. It's a tiny. You can put him back. Always be ready. <laughs> Whoop, there he goes. Uh-oh, there you go. Now what? That looks like a pretty good one. Oh, over the boat, hon, over the boat. Look, there's your white That's bass. That's a white bass there. Oh, oh. <laughs> Here. That's a good fish there, Campbell. Yay. There's our white bass. Don't uh, throw them in the water like you did your big <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's a good point. Can't, uh, can't quite eat them when you throw them back in the water, can you? No. There you go. Nice job, honey. He's just a white bass, but he's a little smaller, but... Can I keep him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but they get a lot bigger. You can catch these that are like two pounds. Well, that was a great morning of fishing. Did you have fun? Yes. That's a good way to go take some out and catch some fish. Absolutely. We caught a ton of fish, little fish to, to really, really big ones. We did. It's a great family thing. We go out, we stay busy catching fish. Besides that, they're great to eat. They're great. What do you think, Campbell? Fish tacos? Yeah. You ready to go back <laughs> and uh, we got a lot of fish to clean. Better get back and get them cleaned up. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have Logan Neely, who has his very first turkey ever taken in the spring turkey season. Had an 11 inch beard, congratulations. Here's a nice white bass caught by nine year old Brody Pierce. It's his first fish ever, and he caught it while fishing with his papaw on Nolan Lake. Here we have Robert Deppin with a nice nine point buck taken in Jefferson County, Kentucky in 2017. Nice job. Check out the smile on Sophie Effler. She's showing us her first fish ever caught while she was three years old. She even baited her own hook. Nice job. Here we have three nice bucks taken by Matthew Ellis, Zach Lee, and Scotty Routon. They were taken in Boyle County. Danny Polly of Edgewood, Kentucky helped his dad call in this nice gobbler in Grant County. Congratulations. Hey, this guy looks familiar. This is Easton Stevens, who's three years old, and I remember him catching this fish at a Finns Lake in Alexandria. Nice job. Here we have Addison Hall, who's 13 years old, with her elk she took last year in Eastern Kentucky. Nice job. Check out this nice buck taken in Campbell County by Jared Zumble. Congratulations. Here we have three-year-old Jordan Zumble, who caught this nice bluegill while fishing at Camp Ernst in Boone County. Nice job. Check out the size of this bluegill caught by two-year-old Samuel McKinney. Caught this on a family farm in Butler County. Nice job. Four-year-old Parker Walden's not afraid to pick up her own catfish as she caught this nice one in Jefferson County, Kentucky. Here we have a father and a son largemouth bass fishing in Mercer County. This is Patrick and Seth McMullen who enjoy watching Kentucky Field. Congratulations. Here's a nice largemouth bass caught by Maddie Ritchie in Bracken County. She caught this while fishing with her Papa Tony. For beautiful views like this here at Del Hollow Lake, consider Kentucky State Parks. For more information or for availability, go to parks at ky.gov. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. Deer processing from the field to the freezer continues to be a runaway favorite for hunters everywhere. From ribs to roast, Sim Harp makes it look easy. Ordering information can be found at fw.ky.gov under the Kentucky Field tab. More Kentucky Field is available at your fingertips. Whether by smartphone or desktop, you'll find extra tips, photos, even behind the scenes video on our social media pages. Join the conversation and stay in the woods or on the water longer when you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Simply search Kentucky Afield on your favorite app.